I've always been a student of the blues and a lover of the blues. I worked as an A&R guy at a couple of labels. You know, quite an improbable place to launch a blues career, but I launched my blues career in Italy. <laughs> Some friends of mine took a leap of faith that I could sing this stuff. And so I went over and uh, we did a, week, a week's worth of shows. It was just this really life-transforming event. Said you got a boy, child coming. And so I came back to Los Angeles and I decided that I was gonna dedicate my life to this. This music has really fallen off people's radar. Um, is as relevant as ever, it just needs uh, champions. So I've done about 200 shows in the last two years. I mean, I've played for rich people and poor people and black people and white people and, and millennial hipsters, and they all just can't refuse it. Slowly I began to write my own stuff, and now it came time to make a record, you know, like a full-length record that sort of, um, for the first time, allowed me to contribute something new to the community. Mindy Abera was the first call I made. Mindy's been uh, sort of along a bit of a similar journey as me in that she's been leaving this one world behind and wanting to get into another world of more, more rootsy, bluesy. So I like the idea of the two of us sort of going arm in arm and, and, uh, and diving into this world. I think we all as artists should have someone to be a partner in crime with for a record. I love that I can kind of drive the ship and let him be this creative force and uh, produce this, you know, amazing music and it, it's great. So we recorded Blade Studios, which is owned by Brady Blade. The place is just so musical and earthy and, uh, and welcoming. When he was talking about doing an authentic blues record and cutting it in a room live, you can do that in Los Angeles, the capital, but it's not going to feel the same with as it would in Treeport, Louisiana. We got a little thing here called Grease. <laughs> it was really, really uh, uh, freeing to sort of be in this space with so much history and soul. And the Reverend Sean Amos, you know, he channels all of that. He is so energetic. I mean, he just gets you pumped up. I mean, you can't help it. Brady introduced me to a guy named Chris Thomas, an amazing upright and electric bass player. We had a local vocal trio who go by the name Forever Jones, a mother and her two daughters who sang together, and they sing in the local church in Shreveport. And my guitarist, Dr. Roberts. Uh, the album's called The Reverend Sean Amos Loves You, and it is uh, 12 songs of just really funky, booty shaking blues. I, I wrote 10 of them. Uh, one of those 10 I co wrote with Mindy Bear. And then there's two covers, and I'm so grateful to be led into this community. Uh, I'm so grateful to be playing with players that, frankly, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have the courage to ask to play with me. The Blind Boys of Alabama are, you know, singing on a track, and Missy Anderson, who's this amazing, you know, new blues talent. Uh, it, it's just kind of mind-bending. Put one foot in front of the other. You know, it's, 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 it's a joyful blues. There's a resilience in this music. And so I can have the worst day on earth uh, and the biggest problems on earth, but for this moment, I can shake and howl and, and, and you know, and, and stomp my feet and summon the strength to get back up and do it again tomorrow. And, and that's, uh, that's the blues. Yeah,